So Fast Food Online is a true software as a service, multi-tenant solution that does it all for nonprofits. It is the only single source solution that seamlessly integrates in a single database, nonprofit fund accounting, fundraising, and payroll in a single solution. Our company, Arrays, was actually founded by a group of CPAs over 30 years ago. So we've been at this for a real long time. So we have a real in-depth understanding of the day-to-day -day challenges that you face as fiscal directors, as development directors, as executive directors for your nonprofit. So 100% of our focus is providing software solutions to the nonprofit industry. And our support staff is also comprised of CPAs. Some of us are no longer actives. We have to kind of put that in as a caveat. But we were practicing CPAs at one time and accountants who've worked in the nonprofit industry. Our users run the gamut from every imaginable type of 501c3, 4, and 5 nonprofits, and also government agencies. We have quite a few small municipalities because the government regulations are very similar to nonprofits when it comes to tracking their funds. So with accounting, you have the ability to do your disbursements, your receipts, managing your deposits, printing checks, and bank reconciliations. Every one of our transaction entry screens is the same, whether you're in disbursements, whether you're in receipts, whether you're doing vendor invoices, whether you are in manually entering revenue journal. All, once you understand the, the screen, it's very simple to get up and running. You have the ability to record recurring transactions. So if you have a, a recurring client bill that goes out to one of your um, clients, you can set it up for auto posting. This is set up where every three months it's going to send a bill to Julie on an automatic basis. So we can set this up to be monthly, once a month, and it's going to change if we want to change starting May. We can update that so Julie will get a bill once a month through December. You have the ability to import transactions. So you can import cash receipts, cash disbursements, vendor invoices, and client bills. You can import your names. You can search for duplicate names. You can merge names if you find that you have duplicates. One of the key things in the Fast Fund system, because it is a single database, is the way we manage names. So for example, if I'm looking at my vendor list in accounting and I pull up 4A Supply, I see all of their contact information, their names, address, phone number, email. I can pull up their vendor activity. I can pull up notes for the vendor. Whether or not they're a 1099 vendor and their contact information. Now, if you notice, it says entity ID 163. Every entity has a, has a unique number. You'll also notice that this constituent, I'm sorry, this vendor is also a constituent. What that means is 4A Supply is also a donor. So I open up their donor record and see the same information, contact information, but when I go to history, I see their donor history. I can pull up their donor summary. So taking a look at this particular donor, um, I get a call from Wiley Coyote Sr. He's finally retiring and his son is going to take over. So I can update the record. And we know that <clears throat> Wiley is married to Joan. So we can update all this information here because we got the call in the development office. We have to change the address. Just so happens that address that was in my memory. So it just pulls up from my memory.
So I've updated the address. I want to make sure that the email now goes to Wiley Jr. So I just updated the constituent record. If I happen to toggle over to my vendor record, all of those updates have already taken place. So one point of entry for all of the names in your database, and we refer to that as a shared entity, so you're able to track different information without mixing things up between your donors and your vendors and easily uh, keep track of everyone that you do business with. In payroll, when you're managing payroll as a nonprofit, typically your employee salaries are going to be funded or they work in different programs. So you might have an, an employee such as Henry Adams, who is on a semi-monthly payroll, and his salary is $45,000, so his base pay is $18.75. He wants to be paid via direct deposit, so we'd have to fill this information for direct deposit. He has some pre- and post-tax income and, and adjustments. And most importantly, when we take a look at his salary allocation, it shows that his $1,875 semi-monthly salary is being split by percentage where 25% is going to the after-school program, a portion to education, 33%, and 42% to admin. If this changes, we can update this. We can say this is only going to be 20%, and we want this to go to our um, orphan care program. And so it automatically updates all of his allocations from salary down to SUDA. We can assign a particular project if we like. And so now we have to completely allocate his salary. It's not 100% allocated, so we're going to add a new distribution line. This is going to be regular pay, and his balance is going to be in administration because he, he helps administer our programs, and it's being funded by Grant 101. So we fully allocated his salary, and when we go to run payroll, we create a new batch. Oh, I actually have too many batches here, so let's delete my oldest batch. Create a new batch. Brings up my direct deposit employees. And then from here, if necessary, I can edit. You know, let's say that he took four days of vacation, so we can change this to vacation. He still gets his salary because he's a salaried employee regardless of how many hours he works. So four days at eight hours a day could be 32 hours. And then when I run payroll, it'll reduce his vacation accrual and also accrue if he's set up for vacation and or sick accrual for his hours worked. Then I would run the payroll and post and then in accounting, a posted payroll shows up in my payroll account. And I can pull up showing my payroll distribution for my employees. If necessary, with proper permissions, I can view it in payroll to show the details or back into accounting. If necessary, I can reprint the check if the employee lost the check. Back in fundraising, from a reporting standpoint, I can track all of my activity, how much money I've raised for each fund, campaign, appeal, and gift. So if I want a campaign summary for my, let's say my fiscal year to date, this is the fiscal year July through June 2016. It shows this particular campaign 
only has one event, the amount of money that I raised. If I have a different event or a different campaign, I can see my general campaign had all of these events during the year, the amount of money that was raised, how close we were to each of our goals, and what the average donation was. If I wanted to see, well, how much was donated for the Central America mission, I can go to my appeal summary. and view the total that was donated for our Central America mission across all of the gifts that we've designated for this particular appeal. The final piece of the puzzle, and I actually closed the wrong window, The final piece I'd like to show you is the ability to customize reports in fundraising. When I was showing you Appleseed Ministry, I showed you a custom report that was created for one of our missionaries. But as a manager, as a development director, you're going to want to see your data in myriad of ways. So with our custom queries and reports, you have the ability to extract from the system virtually every piece of data that you enter into the system. Every single field is searchable, sortable, and exportable. So if I wanted to know who donated over $5,000, I can pull up this report that I've already created for, this is actually for last fiscal year. So let's change this to this year, year to date. And I can generate the report. So this shows the donor, their city and state, the sum of their transaction, the average transaction, the highest transaction, the sl slowest, I'm sorry, the lowest transaction, and the number of transactions. So you have the ability to do a, a very detailed donor analysis and donation analysis for all of your transactions. You could pull up a report for who donated last year, but not this year. You can do some years, but not other years. You could pull up board members who've donated, alumni who've donated. You can track whether or not you have sent a year-end donor receipt to your donors, because that's built into the system, the ability to do your year-end donor receipts. So... The possibilities are endless when it comes to extracting critical data from your system. So I'm going to actually open it up now for questions. Um, we have quite a few attendees today, so and we already have a whole bunch of questions. So the first question is, um, do we convert data? Uh, yes, we do convert data. You have the ability to import names and import transactions, but we do provide data conversion services that encompasses both um, names from third-party fundraising activity and also names um, that, uh, you know, coming in for uh, clients, vendors, um, employees. We can import or convert all of those. Um, yes, we do provide training over and above our support. Uh, we do... Um, training via our go to webinar so you're connected like in the training like you are now but of course you have the opportunity to talk and um, we can tailor the training to your specific needs um, next question um, if you have a grant and a set amount is designated for a min can you track that um, yeah that's that's really easy basically you um, In, in your chart of in your budget, if I'm if I'm in I'm in fiscal year 2016, I could filter my budget. 
So this is admin. So what I want to do is I want to filter on on, on on the first on, well, actually, I'm not going to filter on the fund. What I want to filter on is my admin program or management in general and this particular funding source. Let's say it's a federal grant. So this federal grant um, right now, this is the line items that are funded by this grant and it's only in fund one. Now, if I need to record temporarily restricted funds, that's real easy. So what I would do is I would set up the necessary accounts that I need for that particular grant. So I would select my temporarily restricted fund. I'd select my admin program and my federal grant. So I've got grant revenue and I need revenue release from restrictions for that particular grant. I also want to select fund one so I can select revenue release from restrictions and then my grant revenue coming into my temporarily restricted fund. So I can create those accounts, then go back to my budget. And if I need to refilter this, So once I've got the account set up properly, I can then track the grant revenue and if I want to a portion, a por a, allocate a portion of it to my temporarily restricted fund. Next question. Um, with payroll, you don't have to do direct deposit. You can print checks in payroll. Um, yes, we track payroll tax payments. We do W-2s and the 941s. So you can go back to Arrays Online at the end of this webinar and sign up for a free, no obligation, 30-day free trial. There's actually two things that we provide in our free trial. You could opt in for a free trial where we'll help you get up and running with your company data and provide you with one hour of one-on-one -on -one training to help you get up and running with that 30-day free trial. Or you could sign up for a demo version, which has no limitation on you evaluating the demo version because it already has data. You log into an existing company and work with the existing company and you can get a good feel for how it works, entering transactions, generating reports um, without having to um, invest time in trying to set up your company. Sign up for a trial version today.